<coughs> welcome everybody to the welcome everybody to SIGID, welcome everybody to ESEC FSC 2011. I'm Andreas Eller, I'm the program chair of the technical research track, and I want to give you a few information about our program. Like any other conference, ESEC FSC starts with a call for papers. A call for papers in which you call for papers in which we describe uh, what the topics we want to have, the papers we want to have, and of course by which we invite you, our authors, uh, to submit nice conference, uh, to submit nice su uh, submissions to the conference. Uh, after, the call of, after the call for papers is out, next thing that happens is that we do have a submission site, in our case it was EasyChair, on which uh, you can all submit your research, uh, your re research results. Um, Few of you know how. Uh, few of you may know how the actual distribution of papers across time happens. We opened our site for ESEC FSC on February 15 this year, and uh, this is how the individual uh, contributions came in over time. Uh, two days before the deadline, we had uh, we had just 50 submissions. That's five zero submissions, and I wondered, uh, well, will we be able to actually do a nice conference with that? One day before submission, the number had increased. We had 101 submissions, and uh, still, still this was a record low number for ESEC FSE, but uh, everybody told me, just relax, Andreas, it will all be good at the very end. And uh, lo and behold, on the very last day, in the last 24 hours before uh, the deadline, uh, that's actually when the gist of submissions came in. Uh, the majority of submissions actually came in the last 24 hours. Uh, overall, we had uh, 203 submissions. That was 202 submissions uh, before the deadline, and actually one submission uh, 30 minutes after the deadline. Our, our, our server crashed under the load for, for five minutes, and so we had a, had a small grace period in which another, another few papers then finally got in. If you look at the distribution of uh, submissions all over the world, you'll see that, um, you'll, you'll see that um, well, Almost every continent is in there. We have papers, of course, we have papers from Austria, Belgium, Brazil, uh, Argentina, from Chile, from Canada, many submissions from China, from India, from Hong Kong, from Italy, France, uh, Portugal, Spain, uh, Finland, uh, Norway, <laughs> Sweden, the UK, and a large number of papers from the United States. Altogether, we had uh, 180 authors coming from the United States, which sets a record. Uh, the next largest country in uh, number of authors is China. China's catching up rapidly. Next ones are Canada, Germany, Italy, and Singapore. Singapore with uh, 22, sorry, where's Singapore? Uh, Singapore is here, yeah. Singapore with, uh, 22, with uh, 22 authors, uh, probably the highest number of authors per square meter ever. <laughs> in contrast to the US or Canada, where this is far more spread, or the two authors of Russia, for instance. Are, uh, in terms of topics, uh, this is the list of topics that we had on our website. Uh, authors could uh, classify the paper according to these topics. The all-time favorite for, like, uh, for any major software engineering conference is software testing and analysis. I think we simply haven't found a way to split this into more, uh, into, into better subgroups yet, but this is the gist of all pa gist of papers. Next more popular uh, things are software tools, empirical software engineering, theory and formal methods, case studies and experience reports. On the other hand of the spectrum, you'll find software policy and ethics, on which we had exactly one submission. And our end user software engineering, which has exactly three submissions. I'm perfectly, I'm, I'm perfectly happy to see many papers in these areas, but maybe we should also think about policy and ethics in these areas. For ESEC FSC, we assembled a program committee consisting of 27 members, which uh, came from all across the world with a special focus on Europe, this being the European Software Engineering Conference. Uh, also, with a wide with a wide range of areas, I'm very very happy, uh, very very happy, to have uh, to have, have been able to work with a with a uh, extraordinarily competent program committee. And uh, this program committee then was in charge of reviewing all the submissions. Initially, papers would be uh, reviewed by two reviewers only. Afterwards, we send these two early reviews to our we send these two early reviews. Back to the authors who could then uh, who could then send an author's response, and based on this author's response as well as on the initial results, I decided whether a paper would get a third review. In particular, say if the authors would say, "Are the 
the reviews totally misunderstood our paper, which would frequently be the case, then I would then we'd frequently be tempted to add, an, to add a third review to it. Overall, we had uh, 504 reviews being written in the program committee, which boils down to workload of 19 to 20 papers reviewed for every single PC member. And uh, well, if you look at the distribution of reviews, as they came in over time, the deadline uh, was on April 24, and uh, I see there, I, I see in, in this distribution there's something I find strongly human uh, with respect to deadlines. Uh, I, as a PC teacher, did not review any paper. However, my job was to read all these reviews and to, ch and, and to read all the comments on it. I just checked yesterday uh, with respect to ESEC FSC. Uh, I received a total of 3,700 emails. And uh, since uh, almost all of these emails were actually related to the paper selection, I actually re also read almost all of these 3,700 emails, including this was reviews, this was comments on the reviews, this was comments on the comments, it was online discussions, and I was busy just, uh, I was busy overseeing this entire process. Actually, it's not only our 27 uh, program committee members who, who took part in the reviews, there's another 109 additional reviewers who were chosen based on their expertise in specific fields who assisted our 27 reviews in their work. So another, so, so literally, literally putting up together a conference like this is really the work of hundreds in here. ESEC FSC, after we had all our offline discussions, we met in a nice place. This is Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, it isn't exactly clear from the picture that this is Honolulu, Hawaii. Actually, we were stuck in a windowless room for about 11 hours a day. Um, and, um, yeah, uh, well, the next day we could see some of Hawaii if, we were, if, we, if we were actually able to. This is our program committee. This is us after our 10-hour marathon session. And you can see from our faces that we're all uh, exhausted but happy to have been able to put together a great program. What are the papers that we actually accepted? Uh, by the way, with the members of the program committee who are in here, uh, just please step up such that we can thank you for the wonderful work. Thank you very much. Please. <laughs> looking, at, uh, looking at the papers we accepted, I have a, a few statistics for you. Altogether, we accepted um, 34 out of 203 papers. That's uh, an acceptance rate of 17%, uh, one out of six papers on average. Our topics that had a slightly higher uh, acceptance rate on average, software testing and analysis had a somewhat higher acceptance rate. Our empirical software engineering uh, is, a, is a booming topic with plenty of papers in here. Software uh, dependability, also a popular topic as well. Uh, in particular among reviewers, uh, software configuration management and deployment, 27% acceptance rate, and uh, software economics and metrics. I should point out that uh, metrics, configuration management, and empirical software engineering are intercorrelated because they're intercorrelated due to the topic of uh, mining software repositories, which of course, well, it, which is frequently concerned with metrics and mining version archives. On the other hand of the spectrum, we have uh, areas with lower than, with lower than Average acceptance rate. So, for architecture and design, proved out to be not as popular this year, despite a high number of uh, submissions. Requirements engineering. Requirements engineering is one of the most important topics in software engineering overall. However, low number of submission and an even lower number of accepted papers. Our uh, engineering of distributed parallel software systems, just the same. Our uh, hot topic, but but not at the, but not at the level we'd like to see here at ESEC FSC. Program comprehension and visualization, a 19 paper submitted, only one got accepted, are again an indication, of, an indication of, um, of differing standards in the program committee as well as in the submitters. Patterns and frameworks, also plenty of papers, but uh, didn't prove popular with the program committee. Our, <clears throat> looking a bit deeper into these individual papers, our, this is, uh, this is a word cloud of words that frequently occur, that occur only in accepted papers at ESEC FSC. Uh, you'll find that, for instance, the word flawed only occurs in accepted papers. None of the rejected papers would use the word flawed for anything. Uh, you'll also find words like broth, for instance. I think this comes from uh, many, many cooks spoil the broth in here. Um, you'll, if, if, if you look very closely, you'll also find the word sex in here. 
None of the rejected none of the rejected papers use the word sex. However, we have a paper in the program which is testing software in the age of data privacy, a balancing act, uh, which uses the word sex. Obviously, it's concerned with privacy, and I'm also curious to see how a balancing act is related to sex in here. Our, and there's also other words. Well, there's there's also other words which work fairly well. The, all these papers got accepted by the program committee. Uh, we also have the other way. This, uh, these are words that only occur in the rejected uh, rejected papers. Are there a couple of people have approached me and asked, "Well, can I get the full list of can I get the full list of words? Can we build a predictor out of that, such that uh, I can such that I can actively avoid these words in my in my future in my in my future words and only build my paper out of accepted words?" Our Prem de Menbu tried that for uh, ICSI two years ago, and it turns out that the appropriate predictor doesn't work at all. So usage of these words is not directly related to acceptance or not. However, there's a few words in here, such as uh, synchronization, for instance, or we have locking in here, or we have algebra in here, contracts just as well. These words, act uh, these words actually point to specific areas that prove to, be, that, that prove to have a lower than usual acceptance rate. So all these papers eventually were rejected. If you want to build a predictor, actually, a better way to do this would be to look at the, would be to look at the reviews, actually. These are words that occur in the reviews only of the accepted papers. Uh, well, there's, um, this is, uh, there's, the, the, there's quite a number of words, like perforation, for instance, which directly come from the vocabulary of the papers they refer to. But uh, if you look at the words that occur frequently in the reviews of rejected papers, you'll find words like um, obscure, rigorously, unfortunately, uh, disappointed, uh, flawed. Here again, yeah. But this is for the This is what the reviews say about the rejected papers, are uh, uh, and other words that are the other words that are simply negative. That are very very negative in here. And uh, it turns out that build, based on these words, based on these words like unfortunately or likewise, you can actually pretty easily build a predictor for uh, whether the paper will be accepted or not based on the reviews, which means that, um, which means that my job as a program chair will eventually be replaced by, uh, by, a, by, by a nice machine learning model, which is perfectly fine with me, except that uh, a model wouldn't be able to give a talk in the end. So this is about, this is about the technical program. Our, a couple of additions. We do have a. We had a special. We had had a special institution this year for ESAC FSC. We want to encourage researchers to provide artifacts, that is, tools and data for future research. Which means that we want to encourage papers that provide data, such that others can build on that data. That provide tools, such that, that others can use these tools for future research. We had to set up a special artifact evaluation board to take care of this, led by Shriam Krishnamurti and Karo Getsi. And uh, we had uh, this artifact evaluation board has selected seven papers whose artifacts met or exceeded expectations. These are papers specially recommended by the Artifact Evaluation Board such that you can build your future research on it. And we also have a Distinguished Artifact Award, which is sponsored by Microsoft. This is a premium of $1,000. All of this to be handed out at the award session at the gala dinner. And we do have, and um, the authors of these, um, the, the seven papers which we recommend specific, specifically for the artifacts are marked in the program as such. And they also, have, they also come in a special session on Friday in which uh, the authors present the specific values of their artifact in addition to presenting their papers uh, in terms of research results. We have an industrial track with a, whose papers have a special focus on being applicable in industry or coming from industry. We have seven papers in a special track. Uh, Frank Tipp and Volker Grun were in charge of this track. This is for, this is for all of you who want to see which are how our research in academia relates to the actual problems in industry and vice versa. We have a new ideas track led by Martin Robillard in which we present papers on ideas in early stages of development and by the nature of these very papers, uh, and by the nature of these very ideas, the presentations are short, uh, typically five minutes, very vivid presentations, very fun presentations, and if you ever, if, if, if you want to be, if, if you want to be really entertained and get some infusion in terms of new ideas, the new ideas track is just the right thing for you. 
We do have a tool demos track. The tool demos show early implementations of novel software engineering concepts, meaning that you can actually see how these things are working, but, you, but we also see major prototypes, prototypes sometimes which actually qualifies artifacts, which, we can, which you can download and use for yourself. We have uh, formal presentations, and we have formal presentations as part of the program in which people present their tools on the stage, and we also have a demonstration area in which uh, the authors demonstrate their tools uh, in a more intimate setting in which you can interact with the authors and work, and, uh, work with them uh, on their tools. Finally, we do have a, a huge set of uh, pitch videos which are being shown in the entrance area right now. This is, these, are, these are places where uh, our authors have put together lots of effort to come up with the latest and greatest in order to, in order to uh, advertise their work. Our, this is uh, David Notkin in here. This is David Notkin in here saying, thou shalt not conflict uh, proactive detection of collaboration conflicts, for instance, which takes place, uh, which, 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 which is a talk today. Uh, and picked this out specifically because Reed Holmes, one of the authors, is actually the person who suggested that we put up such pitch videos. All our videos are also placed on YouTube. They're linked from the F ESEC FSC program site. And if you want to see, if you want to get an idea, a 30-second idea of what's going on in this, of what's going on in, in, in the talks today, just look at the online program and go to the, go, go to the, go to the videos. They're, they're of amazing quality. The authors have, authors have put a ton of creativity into these videos, and I think this is something we should adapt for future conferences just as well. Finally, our, a, bit of, um, finally a bit of administration. Our, if you're presenting today, or if you're presenting at any time at the conference and your session has a session chair, please go and identify them. You'll find them in the printed program as well as on the online program. Our, please also contact them such that the such that the session chairs know, that, know you beforehand. Please be in your room in which the presentation is 10 minutes before the session starts, and then the session chair will take care of everything. And we also have two changes to the program in terms of session chairs today. Uh, research track four, this is analysis one, will be handled by Tibor Gimothi, and research track six, collaboration, will be handled as session chair by myself. That's all about the program for today. Thank you very much for your attention. It's a, it'll be a great conference. Thank you very much. And with that, I'd like to call in Wilhelm Schäfer, our keynote speaker for today.